What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to find the volumes of composite solids and also of solids that have voids in them. So we're specifically going to be covering pyramids in this video, okay? So let's start with this first example right here. Now in order to find the total volume of this solid, we first need to find the volume of this rectangular prism down here and then we need to find the volume of the pyramid up here and then just add them together, okay? So in order to find the volume of this rectangular prism, you wanna use this formula right here. So the volume of a rectangular prism or the volume basically of anything that looks like a box is just equal to the length times the width times the height, okay? So here the length is four, the width is six, and the height is two. So we're gonna have four times six times two. Four times six is 24, and 24 times two is 48. All right, so that's the volume of this rectangular prism down here. Now we need to find the volume of the pyramid on top. So the volume of the pyramid, of any pyramid, is equal to one third the base times the height. So the volume of this pyramid is gonna be equal to one third. Now what is the area of the base? Well, the area of the base of the pyramid is this guy right here. So it's the exact same rectangle that we have down here. Okay, so the area of this rectangular base is just four times six. So we'll just put four times six right there. And then we're going to multiply by the height of the pyramid. So what's the height of the pyramid? Well, it's this vertical distance right here that's given as three inches, right? So it's gonna be three inches right there. So here, one third times three, that's equal to just one, right? And then one times what we have here in the middle is four times six, which is equal to 24. So the volume of the pyramid is equal to 24. So in order to find the total volume, again, we just add these two numbers up. So 48 plus 24, and that's equal to 72. And our units, don't forget, are inches cubed, all right? Don't forget your little cubic exponent because volumes are three-dimensional. All right, here's the next example we're gonna try. So here, this time we have a triangular prism on the bottom, and on top we have another pyramid, a triangular pyramid, okay? So the first thing we can do is find the volume of this triangular prism on the bottom, so let's do that. So the volume of a triangular prism is equal to one half times the length times the width times the height, all right? So here, this is gonna be equal to one half, the length is 12, the width is nine, and the height of the prism is 10, okay? So one half times 12 times nine times 10. So here, one half times 12, that's equal to six, and six times nine is equal to 54, and 54 times 10 is equal to 540. Okay, great, so that's the volume of this triangular prism. Now let's find the volume of this triangular pyramid. So the volume of a pyramid is again, one third the base times the height. Okay, so first let's find the area of the base. So the base of this pyramid is this shape right here which is the exact same as this triangle down here, right? So what is the area of this triangle down here? Well, the area of that triangle is equal to one half the base times the height, right? So it's gonna be equal to one half the base, we'll say it's 12, so times 12, and the height of the triangle is nine, all right? So one half times 12 is equal to six, and six times nine is equal to 54. So the, and our units are centimeters, right? So centimeters squared. So the area of this triangle down here, which is the same area of this triangle up here, is 54 centimeters squared. So that's the area of the base, right? So that's what we're gonna plug in for this base right here. We're gonna plug in a 54. And then the height of the pyramid, it's given as this vertical distance, right? Seven centimeters. So we're gonna plug in a seven for the height. So the volume of this pyramid up here is gonna be equal to one third times 54 times seven. And if you multiply this out, you're gonna get that this is equal to 126, right? Now, again, in order to find the total volume, we just have to add up our two volumes together. 
So here we're going to get 540 plus 126, and that's equal to 666. Ooh, spooky. Centimeters cubed. I see dead numbers. Boom. All right, here's the next example that we're going to try. And this time we have two pyramids that are connected at the bases, right? And as you can see, this, uh, I'll just highlight it right here. This is a square base. And we know it's a square because it gives us the length right here, right? It's eight centimeters. But it says that this side is congruent to this side, which is congruent to this side, which is congruent to this side. So they're all congruent. They're all the same length. They're all eight centimeters. Okay, and they also both happen to be the exact same height, right? So the pyramid on the top is five centimeters tall and the uh, pyramid on the bottom is also five centimeters tall. Okay, so if we find the volume of just one of these, these pyramids, we could just double it, right? And it'll give us the total volume. So let's just find again the volume of one of the pyramids. Let's just do the top one over here. So we're gonna say again that the volume of a pyramid is equal to one third the area of the base times the height. So here we're gonna get one third times the area of the base and the area of the base, well, again, it's a square. And if this is eight centimeters and this is eight centimeters, eight times eight is 64. So the area of the base is 64 and the height of the pyramid of just one pyramid is five centimeters, all right? So then if you multiply this out, you'll get that that's equal to approximately 106.67. Now remember, we just have to double this so we can get the volume of this bottom pyramid too. So if you would just simply multiply this by two, you'll get that this is equal to 213.33 and our units are centimeters cubed. Boom shakalaka. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's try one more here. So as you can see this time, we have another, looks like a cube this time, right? All the dimensions are the same. But this time this pyramid is basically being cut out, right? There's a void right here that's pyramid shaped. So this time we're just gonna find the total volume of this cube and then we're gonna subtract out the volume of this pyramid, okay? So first of all, the volume of this cube, the volume I'll say of the cube, and again, the volume of anything that looks like a box is just the length times the width times the height. So here we're just gonna get 12 times 12 times 12, and that's equal to 1,728. Okay, easy enough. Now let's find the volume of this pyramid. So the volume of the pyramid is gonna be equal to one third the base times the height. Okay, so what is the area of the base? of this pyramid? Well, it would be this shape right here, right? So what is the area of this guy? Well, it's a little hard to tell, right? Because it's slanted, right? It doesn't tell us exactly what these lengths are. The only thing that we can really see here is that the corners of the base appear to hit this top square at the midpoints. So for instance, the corner of over here of the base hits this side at the midpoint. Right, the corner of the base over here looks like it hits this side at the midpoint. Same thing back here, kind of looks like it hits it at the midpoint and same thing over here, okay? So all we know about the base is that the corners of the base hit the square at the top at the midpoints. So let's draw a picture, maybe a picture will help, all right? Let's draw a picture. Well, you're not drawing a picture, I'm drawing a picture. All right, so let's draw in these corners now, right? So this is the square, this is the top, but the corners hit the sides of the square at the midpoints, right? So it hits it here, hits it here, hits it here, and hits it here, okay? So let's connect these dots, both literally and figuratively. Okay, so how can we figure out what the lengths of this base are? Well, one thing that might help is, well, remember, we know the total length of the square, right? All the sides of the squares are 12 inches. So we know that this whole length right here is 12 inches. And we know this whole side over here is 12 inches, right? All the sides are 12 inches across. And if we know we're splitting them in half, then that means this side is six inches and this side is six inches, right? Same thing over here. This is six inches, this is six inches, right? All, all the way around, they're all just 
six inches. Okay, so maybe it's a little bit more clear now what we're setting up. Uh, because remember, this big top thing is a square, so we know all the angles are right angles, right? If it's just a perfect square. And so as you can see, we've set up a right triangle right here in order to solve for a missing side. And we know two of the lengths of this right triangle, right, the two shorter sides, and what we're looking for is the hypotenuse, the longest side, which here I'll just label as x. Okay, so in order to find the length of this side, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Because whenever you know two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third one using the Pythagorean theorem, which again is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where a and b are the two shorter sides and c is the longest side, right? So the two shorter sides here are six and six. So that's what we're gonna plug in for a and b. So we're gonna get six squared plus six squared is equal to, we don't know the hypotenuse, right? We just labeled it as x, so we'll just leave it as x squared for now. Now six squared is equal to 36, six squared is equal to 36, and that's equal to x squared. 36 plus 36 is equal to 72, and again, that's equal to x squared. Now to get rid of this exponent, you can kindly ask it to go away, but it probably won't. So what we have to do here instead is take the square root of both sides, okay? Now that that's there, the square root or the radical, this kills this, thankfully. And all we're left with is x, and that's equal to the square root of 72, which right now, let's just leave it as the square root of 72. Okay, so x is equal to the square root of 72. All right, so this length of the square is the square root of 72. This length of the square is also the square root of 72, right? It's a square, so all the lengths, all four lengths are equal to the square root of 72. Okay, great, so now that we know what the lengths of the square are, let's plug it into our volume formula. So again, the volume of the pyramid is equal to one third the base times the height. So here, this is gonna be equal to one third times the area of the base. And since it's a square, we could just multiply the length times the width together. So the length is the square root of 72, and the width is also the square root of 72. And then we're gonna multiply it by the height of the pyramid, which is, it goes from the top all the way to the bottom, which is 12 inches, right? So times 12. So then here, this is gonna be equal to one third. And the square root of 72 times the square root of 72, that's the same thing, let's just write it over here. That's the same thing as the square root of 72 squared, right? And again, the square root and the squared exponent kill each other, so we're just left with what's ever inside, so just 72. So this is equal to just 72 and then times the height, which is 12. And now if you multiply this out, you'll get that the volume of the pyramid is equal to 288, all right, great. So now we just need to subtract the volume of the cube and the volume of the pyramid, right? So we're gonna get that the total volume, I'll just write it as volume T, is equal to 1728 minus 288, which is equal to 1440. And again, our units, our inches, right? So we get inches cubed, boom. So if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below.